Hi everyone and welcome to module number two of this short course on incentives in computer science. Uh, this is a module about the prisoner's dilemma, which is a very famous and frankly quite uh, conceptually useful example from uh, the field of game theory. So we'll talk about the prisoner's dilemma in its own right, learn some lessons about it, uh, and then we'll wrap up this module by seeing how those lessons were actually applied uh, in a well-known peer-to-peer uh, approach to file transfer, uh, something known as BitTorrent. As always, if what I'm going to discuss in this module whets your appetite for further details, I encourage you to check out the lecture notes for my Incentives in Computer Science class, uh, which again you can access from my homepage, timruffgarden.org. Let's now talk about a little bit about uh, game theory. So for us, game theory, we won't really study it formally. It'll show up more through examples. Uh, and indeed, that's one of the things game theory is really famous for, just these really simple examples, which nonetheless really accurately capture the incentive issues which pop up in the world all around us all the time. So in general, when you're describing a game in the sense of game theory, you need to specify three things. So first of all, you need to say who are the decision makers, called players in this context. We're just going to have two. You need to say, what are the actions available to each of the players? And again, for us, we're just going to have two possible actions for each of the two players. And then finally, you have to specify how the players feel about the various outcomes. Okay, so given the choice of action by both players, how much does a player like that outcome over the others? And we're going to measure this preference in terms of a, a numerical score called a payoff to the player. Concretely, I want to think about the following file transfer game. I'm calling it a file transfer game, you know, just sort of looking forward to our eventual uh, application in peer-to-peer -peer networks to file transfer. So as I said, we're going to have two players, and in computer science, when you have two players, it's a uh, convention to refer to them as Alice and Bob, so that's what we'll do here. So two players, Alice and Bob, and the setup is uh, Alice has a file that Bob wants, and conversely, Bob has in, in his possession a different file which Alice wants. Now, each of the two players has to decide whether to be nice and upload the file that the other player wants or not, to not do that. So accordingly, as promised, each of the players has two different strategies, one where you upload and one where you don't upload. And we're going to be thinking about the two players as making these decisions simultaneously at the same time. So you don't know what the other player is going to do when you're making your decision. Finally, we need to specify uh, the player's payoffs, that is, how much they like or don't like the various outcomes uh, that could occur. So first of all, you know, the player wants the file they don't have, so let's assume they derive a benefit of, uh, pay of three from acquiring the file from the other player. So that's something a player wants to see happen, higher payoffs are better, so we'd love to get this benefit of three by downloading the file it wants uh, from the other player. Uh, as far as its own decision about whether to upload its file or not, well, you know, uploading carries a cost, right? You have limited bandwidth, or maybe you pay for your bandwidth. So let's say the cost of performing an upload is one. Now we can summarize all of this information using what's called a payoff matrix. So this is just going to be a table, two-dimensional table. Uh, there'll be two rows and two columns corresponding to Alice's two strategies of upload or not and Bob's two strategies of upload or not. That'll give us four outcomes, depending on what Alice and Bob decide to do. And then in each of those entries of this two by two grid, we're gonna have a pair of numbers. The first one specifying the overall payoff to Alice, the second one specifying the overall payoff to Bob. So for example, we have the lower right corner. So that's where both Alice and Bob both sit on their hands. Neither one uploads the file from the other one and neither one gets to download from the other player. So they incur neither the cost nor the benefit, so both of the players just have a payoff of zero in the lower right corner. In the upper right corner, <coughs> upper left corner, excuse me, that's where both of the players decide to upload. So each of them incurs that cost of one for the upload. On the other hand, they get that benefit of three from downloading the file they want from the other player. So overall, each of the players winds up with this payoff of two in the upper left corner. The upper right corner, that's kind of the worst case scenario for Alice. So Alice then actually incurs the cost uh, of uploading uh, her file, but doesn't get the benefit from downloading from Bob, because in this particular outcome, Bob chooses to not upload his file. So that means Alice is going to wind up with a payoff of minus one, the cost of one for uploading and none of the benefit of downloading. 
For Bob, meanwhile, it's the total opposite. So he doesn't have to pay the one to upload because he didn't upload, but because Alice chose to upload, he does get that benefit of three from the download. So his overall uh, benefit's gonna, his overall payoff's gonna be three. And in the lower left corner, the roles are just reversed. So this is Alice's best case scenario, all the benefit, none of the cost, payoff of three. Bob, conversely, none of the benefit, all of the cost, a payoff of minus one. So that's the file transfer game. And the question I now want to ask is, is it better for players to upload or to not upload? And answering this question is where we see that uh, this game, which is equivalent to the prisoner's dilemma, uh, really captures the tension between what's good for the collective and what's good for the individual. Let's start with the individual. Let's say you're Alice. So you're Alice, you're sitting there thinking about whether you should upload or not upload. And now remember, I promised you that Bob is making his decisions simultaneously with you making yours. So Bob cannot in any way condition on what he's going to do on the action you're gonna take now, because you're deciding at exactly the same time. Well, you could reason by case analysis. You could say case one, suppose Bob decides to upload. Okay, that's cool. I mean, he's gonna get this benefit of three from my download no matter what. So my choice is either I don't upload and I get that full benefit of three, or I upload and incur that cost and get a payoff of only two. So I'm happier if I don't upload. I'll have a payoff of three rather than a payoff of two. How about the other case where Bob is not playing along and Bob decides to not upload? Well now, again, I can't control whether he uploads or not. He's decided not to upload in this case. Uh, so what am I, what, what's my decision, right? So either I can also not upload and then, you know, I'll have a cost of zero, none of the cost, none of the benefit, or I can also upload, or, sorry, I can upload even though Bob is not, in which case I get all of the cost and none of the benefit. I have a payoff of minus one. So in other words, in both cases, doesn't matter what Bob is doing, doesn't matter if he's uploading or if he's not uploading, I, Alice, will always be better off by not uploading. Okay, if Bob is uploading, I'll get a three instead of a two. If Bob's not uploading, I'll get a zero instead of a minus one. But either way, I'm better off from not uploading. And if you think about it, of course, everything's symmetric from Bob's perspective. So Bob also has a very strong incentive to not upload because it always gives him a higher payoff, no matter what Alice chooses to do. So that seems like a kind of, you know, unstoppable force pushing the players to both not upload resulting in this lower right outcome where both of the players get uh, a payoff of zero. There's a name for this type of scenario where a player has kind of a no-brainer strategy, a strategy which is always their best move no matter what the other players do, uh, which is to not upload in this case. So that's something known as a dominant strategy in game theory. Again, a dominant strategy is something which you will never regret playing. It is always best for you no matter what all of your opponents do. Dominant strategies are pretty unusual in games that you find in the wild, right? So for example, if, you know, if you're playing chess or something like that, uh, certainly this chess strategy you want to be using is going to depend on the strategy that your opponent is using. So for different opponent strategies to win, you're going to have to make use of different uh, strategies in response. Dominant strategy says you don't even have to think about what the other players are doing. It's just there's this one action that really sticks out is just what you always want to be doing. And again, in the basic prisoner's dilemma, that corresponds to this uh, not uploading. So for our question, is it better to upload or not? If we're thinking from the perspective of an individual, it seems like a pretty clear cut case, right? You should not upload, you'll always wind up with a higher payoff. But what if we think about the collective? Right? So if we think about sort of the players jointly, is it better for them to upload or to not upload? Well, thinking about the collective, it's pretty clear the players are better off if both of them do upload. Then both of them will get that benefit of three. Yeah, they have to pay that cost of one, but still, it's, it's way outweighed by the benefit that they get. So if both of them upload, they both wind up with a strictly higher payoff than they did before, namely a payoff of two instead of a payoff of zero. So that seems like a clearly better outcome, an outcome where both of them achieve a higher payoff. There's actually a name for that in, in economics. We would say that the upper left outcome, where they both get a payoff of two, we would say that that Pareto dominates the lower right outcome. Because every single player is better off in the upper left outcome than in the lower right outcome. So in some sense, it's hard to make any argument why you might possibly want the lower right outcome. If you can make everybody better off, why wouldn't you want to do it? While I'm on the topic of uh, jargon from economics, you know, some of you may have heard of the concept of a Nash equilibrium. Uh, if any of you saw that film, A Beautiful Mind, that came out in the 90s, 
Uh, you did not learn the correct definition of Nash equilibrium from that film. Um, but in any case, this lower right uh, outcome, the 0-0, zero, zero, uh, where both players play their dominant strategies, that's a special case of a Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is where neither player wants to change what they're doing given what the other player is doing. Dominant strategies, neither player wants to change no matter what the other players are doing. So that's a special case uh, of a Nash equilibrium. I've described this game in terms of file transfer, again, kind of looking ahead to the application of peer-to-peer -peer file transfer that we'll conclude this module with. Um, but actually, this game is completely equivalent to this famous example that I told you about, The Prisoner's Dilemma. The usual parable behind The uh, Prisoner's Dilemma is the following. So you, you imagine that two people are corralled by the police and accused of a crime. The police interrogate the two suspects separately and their strategy is to try to get each suspect to rat out the other one. If each prisoner accuses the other one, then both of them receive a lengthy sentence. If neither prisoner accuses the other, then police can only get them on a light sentence for a lesser charge, and they both serve relatively uh, short uh, prison terms. On the other hand, if exactly one of the prisoners accuses the other, then the turncoat is set free while the accused is locked up for the crime for life. And if you think about it, the structure of these payoffs is exactly the same as in this file transfer game. So in the, in the prisoner's dilemma, um, you know, what we're here calling upload, that would normally be called the cooperate strategy. Uh, and what we're calling not uploading, that would correspond to the defecting strategy. So the prisoner's dilemma really beautifully isolates uh, the essential conflict which can come up between, on the one hand, incentives for an individual, and on the other hand, what's best for a collective. Uh, and it really shows up all the time in real life, and it, it is a useful skill to be able to recognize it. And let me just give you one quick example. Uh, think about, like, doping in sports, like, say, in cycling, like during the Tour de France. Well, let's assume that for each rider, they care more about winning than about the relatively low probability of getting caught or about the uh, side effects of doping. In that case, for each of the cyclists, it's a dominant strategy to go ahead and dope. Now, that leads to sort of an outcome where everybody's doping, whereas all of the cyclists would be better off if none of them doped, because you'd get basically the same results, race results, um, but on the other hand, you wouldn't have all of those nasty side effects. I'm sure if you think about it for just a few minutes, you'll be able to come up with other examples that you've seen in real life, maybe even, you know, in the last couple of days. Um, and, you know, this Prisoner's Dilemma really highlights one of the strengths of game theory, which is its, its amazing examples, uh, which on the one hand fit on a cocktail napkin, but on the other hand accurately capture the essence of incentive issues uh, that are ubiquitous in the real world.